Hello everyone, my name is James Rangan and I am here to try and record a quick video for a change about, uh, this time I'm going to talk about um, using FS Logics to manage device based licensing in remote desktop session host or ZenUp situations. So there we go, that is the, uh, the, the, the huge title I have uh, given myself for this. So just a quick bit of background before I kick off and show you how you can do it. Um, it's been a bugbear for quite a long time of uh, ZenApp kind of administrators or, or remote desktop session host server administrators per device licensing. Yeah, What we mean by per device licensing is software that is licensed specifically by the actual endpoint devices that can run it. Now, obviously, if everybody has a dedicated device where the software is installed, then this is all very easy to deal with for um, admins. However, if you're a Zenup, Citrix Zenup, or a Microsoft Remote Desktop Session Host Server Administrator, you have a bit of a problem because essentially you're putting it onto a device which can then be accessed by possibly tens of thousands of different users. And most licensing is okay with this kind of terminal server licensing model, but anybody that uses this strict per device licensing, the two best known ones possibly being older versions of Microsoft Project and Microsoft Visio, could mean you have to buy lots more licenses than you want, right? So say you have 30 users that you want to use this per device licensed software and you install it onto a, a terminal server, a ZenApp server, and technically uh, 10,000 users in your environment can access that server. You can't just buy 30 licenses, you have to buy 10,000 because technically 10,000 users can access it. And so therefore putting this per device model into ZenApp RDS search environments can cost a huge amount of money. Now, even if you were to do something like saying, well, I'm only going to publish the app via an AD group to a specific group of users, Microsoft don't let that wash because technically a user could run another app on there and browse through the file system and run the app that they're not allowed to run. They've got access to it. You could lock it down with app lockers and policies and group policies and things like that. But Microsoft are, they're, they're being quite strict about this. They modified the approach slightly. They added what was called roaming use rights for SA customers. But the per device license model is very murky and it's potentially costly in an audit situation. What you've got to do is you've got to prove to the auditor that you've taken the required steps to restrict access to a specific subset of devices. Now, for a long time, and I even blogged about this, people use things like AppSense Application Manager to deal with this, which is now known as Avanti Application Control. Um, they kind of had a quasi official response from Microsoft that allowed them to run with that as a feature. But Microsoft have now distanced themselves from any specific third party endorsement for per device licensing. Now that doesn't mean that stuff like Avanti app Application Control is invalid, it just means that Microsoft have now said they're going to judge each of these per device license cases on their individual merits. So to put it another way, if there's anywhere that you haven't covered your backside and made sure that the users can't break out of whatever solution you've put together for them, they're going to bill you for it and they'll bill you big if, if, if they possibly can. Uh, Microsoft licensing, don't make me started on that, it is completely loaded against you. However, Microsoft have issued a set of guidelines that will drive the approach to auditing per device license software in the ZenApp or RDS situations. I really should have closed my uh, closed my email, shouldn't I? Bit of a fail there. All right, number one is that the software, you must prove that the software is restricted to a specific set of client devices, the ones that you've paid the money on. So if you've paid for 30 licenses for a piece of software and you've put it on a terminal server, you must be able to prove that only those devices and only, I stress, those devices can access that software without any possible way to circumvent it. The licenses must also be transferable between devices. And the third requirement is that reporting must be available on the current and historical license usage. Without further ado, I've taken <laughs> nearly five minutes to do the introduction. So there you go. Um, so much for having a nice quick video. Let's see how we can do it with FS Logics because. FS Logics is quite nice and simple for dealing with things like Java, with profiles and things like that, uh, Office 365 issues, OneDrive issues, all sorts of different things which we're still discovering nice cool uses for. As I said, things like, like Avanti Application Control are still perfectly valid. If you've got it, then use that way. I'm sure it ticks all of these boxes and can be meant to tick all of these boxes. However, um, we're talking about FS Logics today, so that's what we're going to look at from the perspective of this. 
So we're going to use the application masking feature. So basically, the application masking feature in FS Logics, basically, um, if you're logging on one of the client devices that we want to be able to run this, it's going to show the application to the user. And if it's not, it's going to hide it completely. That's the premise we're going to work on. So quickly, um, what I'm going to do is I have a server here that has got Visio installed somewhere, he says. Looking for it. There it is, right at the top. Smack. Bang! In front of my eyeballs. And I have published this out. Where's my Zenap um, environment? And we have it published here somewhere when my screen refreshes. Visio 2016 is published, available via storefront. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and restrict that to only run from one particular device. And the particular device we're going to use is this Windows 10 virtual machine here, UK SLD 212. Just rolls off the tongue nicely. We're going to run it from there, but we're not going to run it from anywhere else. So how quick and easy can we set this up? Right. I've already installed on this machine the, the, the FS Logics console. So what I also need to do is install the actual FS Logics agent software itself so that I can do it. Obviously, I'm doing it on this machine that I've already installed my Visio onto. But just to show you how quick and easy it is, FS Logics. This actually isn't the latest version. There's a later version available, but I can't be bothered to download another version because I know this one works as well. Um, right, so let's just set up FS Logics on our server like so. Run the file. Da -de da -de da agree to the license, accept the USA. Obviously, in an enterprise situation, we deploy the FS Logics apps into the image or through a deployment mechanism like SACM, etc. But I'm just showing you here because it's dead quick and easy to do. All right, so FS Logics apps is now in that, 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 take my false teeth out, is now installed in there. So I will just quickly check that the FS Logics app service is running because I did a dry run of this before and the service didn't start. I looked like a fool <laughs> because nothing worked. Okay, that's fine. Um, probably a, a limitation of my lab. So we've already installed what's called the rules editor as well. So we'll just run that. And it's kind of like a little console. So what we're going to do is, quite simply, we're going to create a new application masking rule. And we're going to call it Visio Licensing Rule. There we go. And with FS Logics now, we get a wizard that we can use that actually goes and scans stuff and sets it all up. And you choose from the installed programs. And there it is right in the middle. Microsoft Visio Professional 2016. So let's just scan that. Right, it's already complete. And there we go. All the file system and registry entries have been sucked in by the FS Logics wizard and are now put together in this Visio licensing rule that we have here, which is fan dabby dozy. It's all sorted. So we've got the application published and um, which is available to particular users. We've scanned all that stuff out. Now, just quickly, I will show you here that we have in our rule. A function in this version of FS Logics called licensing parameters. And here we can change the minimum amount of time that a license will be assigned for, which kind of fits in with the transferability rules. So you can assign it to a particular device for a specific period of time, and then you get a warning when it's uh, when it's about to expire or if you're in violation of that, which allows you to transfer it between devices, but also to ensure that it can be assigned to a device for a particular period of time. So that fulfills one of our parameters in there so very important that we do this so when it comes down to actually actually um, setting up the rule what we are going to do is uh, obviously we've set up this hiding rule so it's ready now to apply this hiding rule which will hide visio it'll stop it from being seen at all it'll be invisible in the file system so essentially the user won't be able to use it what we need to do is now manage the assignment for this rule right so first of all we'll just quickly whip out the everyone rule because we don't want that in there what you need to remember for fs logics rules is that they're evaluated from the top down right they're not like other stuff like AppSense where it the first matching rule is the one that's applied. It'll evaluate the whole lot and then apply it on there. So what we need to do is add, right, and the way when we open up um, um, a Civic Zen App session or an RDSH session from our client machine onto a remote server, 
there's an environment variable created that is populated with the name of the client and this is the way we're going to restrict it to specific client connecting devices being able to run the application or not we're going to use the client name environment variable yeah so first of all we're going to set one up that's got a wildcard in because it accepts a wildcard so this is going to match every client name and we're going to set this one up as the masking rule is applying so it'll evaluate the first rule and say look if your client name matches anything i'm going to apply this masking rule yeah but then what we do is what we whack in underneath it is we whack in a rule that matches uk sld 212 which is the one device so imagine we've got one visio license in this environment the one device we want to be able to run this and we're going to set that up as a does not apply so if you get the picture first it'll work through both of the rules yeah so it'll say if your client name is anything i will apply this rule unless your client name equals uk sld 212 in this case in which case i won't apply the rule so essentially this rule will apply to every client except the ones you specifically specify yes and what you can do um that i should probably quickly show you is in there we have a from file um client no name can't even spell uh, from file that lets you stipulate a file full of for instance you know uh, computers that you so if you if you want to add a thousand in you don't have to add them all in by hand you can spit them out into a text file and then populate it that way right now that's all you need to do hopefully <laughs> he says famous last words click ok on that right um any of you that are possibly familiar with fs logics out there may well know can you tell I'm scrolling through my notes now? <laughs> to deploy the rules, what you do is, I mean, blah, 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 got my false teeth in again. Um, if I go to my documents folder, the default place that these FS Logics rule sets get saved is in the document folder. What you simply need to do, yeah, is copy them from there. And if you're going to where FS Logics is installed, and there is a, what on earth was that? Oh, slack. <laughs> um, you go into the FS Logic rules folder, right? If you paste those rules in here, and then answer obviously yes to the USA, what it will do is the FS Logic service kind of looks at that folder, the rules folder. It then takes those rules when it sees something going in there, puts them into the compiled rules folder, and then automatically starts them them being processed so that is now live and applied to this machine if you wanted to do that across a, a a big wide environment you can quite easily do it with some sort of script a group policy preference anything like that just literally take the the, the rules from a central repository and dump them into there on the machine as soon as they're updated they'll instantly become available through the fs launch app service so that should should he says should be all I need to do to make it work <laughs> and so I'm going to test it now please work <laughs> I had a bit of a had a bit of a bad run earlier on <laughs> where it didn't work right let's just log on to storefront is my storefront even working I haven't even checked you know oh god this could be so embarrassing it could be it really could it's fine it's fine apart from the certificate or, uh, that I haven't sorted out so just log on to storefront I've got this app configured for one user I think this one Jay Rankin we'll soon find out um, if he's got an app there at all <coughs> excuse me and there it is Visio 2016 so this machine that I'm running from isn't UK SLD 212 so it should hopefully fail to launch Hopefully we get some sort of error. Hey, there you go. There's an error. There's an error. It, it can't start. There's no reason why it shouldn't start from a Cirix perspective, but it can't be found on the button. Now, what the FS Logics guys do that Nigel specifically told me from FS Logics, very helpful guy. Um, they normally, when you are setting a rule like this so that it doesn't start the application, they'll do something like redirect to Visio Viewer instead, which is pretty cool, and I'll see if I can update that later on. But I just wanted to do a nice quick one now. So the app can't be run, and then it's just faded out. Cirix has logged me off. So that's cool, because that user can't circumvent that, you know, the, the way into that app. So now, let us um, let us hop over to this virtual machine here, this Windows 10 virtual machine. That's a lovely picture, isn't it? On there. And hopefully we should already have storefront kicking about here somewhere. There you go, it is. 
and make sure I log in with the same username and password. So this machine should hopefully match the client name for UK SLD212. Oops, just really should close my email as well when I'm recording videos. I'm learning on the job here. So let's try and launch that Visio again from here, which is the machine that we have a license for, so that we only have to buy this one Visio 26. Oh God. <laughs> I need to get rid of that. That's a minor bug in Citrix. I don't even know which version I'm using of Citrix. Well, I know it's ZenApp 7, but I can't remember which one. So that needs to be sorted out. It's like a leak in a plumber's house, isn't it? IT guys have all these um, have all these wonderful things set up in their labs, and none of them work properly. It just says waiting desperately for it to. Let's just make sure that works. And there you go. You can see it launching. Did that edit go through okay? One of my sons walked into the room fantastically. So I'm hoping and then I managed to click on the wrong button that stopped my video. Instead, there you go. Visio is now launching from there fantastically. Nice and easy. Let's just verify that it works. Of course it works. <coughs> Why wouldn't it work? Excuse me for coughing. So there we go. We have proved that we can set up Visio to only work from specified machines, which is absolutely fan dabby dozy because now we don't have to pay any um, loads of money out as a penalty. I could install that on a terminal server that had a hundred thousand users accessing it, uh, potentially, and I would only have to pay for one license because it can only run from this one machine, and that's all it's licensed for, which is super uber duper. And just one last thing to quickly show you, not from there, because that's my ZenApp server, but from, um, excuse me, over here, you also have within this um, the capability to produce a licensing report, which matches the third requirement that Microsoft has, that's to make it, uh, to, to allow you to report on the licenses. <coughs> so, there you go, that is how you can use FSLogic's application masking feature within their suite of products to um, handle your per device licensing and it's not just Visio and Project I am aware there's a lot of other bits of software some of the bigger database vendors do use the per device licensing model so there's lots of scope to take this out and I mean I know that a lot of people have purchased uh, particular software in the past specifically to manage things like this I mean literally because you know, the, the the possibility for ROI is quite high. If Microsoft are going to say to you, if you want to install that on Terminal Server, you're going to have to pay for an extra 5,000 licenses, for instance. Paying out a small amount of money for a piece of software to do it generates a pretty sort of, you know, a pretty instant return on investment. Anyway, um, that is all fantastic. I am now off to read all my emails and stuff because I've been uh, I've been elected to the Zurich CTP program today, which is rather fantastic and very surprising news. So yes, um, hopefully have some more videos to come because I've got some stuff to do on ZenUp URL direction and all that sort of stuff. So um, enjoy that one, and I hope you find it useful. Thank you very much.